so with that, that was my call night last night. Um, I know Lucas, I don't know if you have any other general guidelines. This was, um, you know, call through the lens of an intern. And I know you mentioned you were gonna um, head into call from a chief resident. So um, I would love to hear your thoughts maybe on when you are having a new intern take call, what are some of the things that you are gonna want them to contact you for or see on their own or how to manage all of these multiple concept, uh, much, multiple con consults at the same time? Uh, wow, first, Juliana, thanks for, for giving that outstanding doc. I know you had an incredibly busy night and you put together this PowerPoint, you have a very thoughtful presentation, uh, really outstanding. Um, it was enjoyable for, for me to hear, um, but I'm glad I wasn't the one on call. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think you covered all the main points. You know, I've, um, you know, I'm, I think now, what is it today, the 13th? You know, I'm just a couple of weeks away from taking chief call. So, you know, I've started to, to switch my perspective on how am I going to take call um, and how am I going to interact with the, with the junior um, you know, just to kind of recover our structure so that we have one junior in-house who sees all the traumas, takes all the consults, um, triages any issues for any inpatients, uh, and then the, the chief is at, is at home um, who can come in if they're needed for operative issues or procedures or to help with difficult discussions. But by and large, we rely extremely heavily on our juniors to, to really be our eyes, ears, hands, everything in the OR. Um, and so, you know, we like to think we spend a lot of time with them early, getting them up to speed um, so they feel comfortable taking call, can handle a wide variety of situations, and feel comfortable reaching out to, to us with any questions. You know, I think that that's kind of the, the biggest thing. I remember when I started taking call as a junior, it's the very first time is terrifying. When you know that you are the only neurosurgical coverage in the hospital, you know, and the nearest person maybe 10, 20 minutes away, you know, if something comes in and needs to be done, you know, it's you. People are going to look to you when you're down in the trauma bay. You know, people don't, don't know that you're an intern or a two or a three, you know, they see you as the neurosurgeon who's in the hospital. And that's terrifying. It feels a little isolating at first. You feel like you need to know everything and be able to do everything. And I think the first thing to realize when you're in an intern in general, I think this goes across anything in the hospital, is realizing that you're not alone. You're not coming into residency because you're a neurosurgeon and you're just doing a job. You're here to learn and to train um, and then to, to apply that training. So I think really accepting that early and appreciating that, that you don't know everything, you don't know where everything is, and there's always other ways to do them is going to help your experience and autonomy grow um, because the sooner you're willing to reach out for help early to ask questions to be engaged to admit that you don't know something or you know here's what i think but i'm going to verify um, it'll build trust in others um, around the hospital but it'll build trust with the people you're on call with um, you know i i know that despite Juliana being an, an absolutely outstanding intern. You know, she's an intern. She's got one year of experience. And I can't expect her to do all the, the things that I would or one of my colleagues or one of the chiefs because, you know, she's got six years le left of training. Um, and so I would much rather have her bug me with a question every 10 minutes about Where's X supply? Or I've got this patient coming in. I'm going to go see them. Can I run an exam by you? Or, um, you know, here's a lab value. You know, how would you manage this? And then you can, can go over it. You can teach. You can um, talk about each scenario. Um, and you can build rapport. You can build trust. And you can learn. Um, even as a four, I was still doing that all the time with chiefs. You know, I'd run a patient by them. You know, what do you think about this? You know, I would feel confident that I could get through it, but I always wanted to just have another set of eyes or another set of opinions. Um, you know, a lot of it comes back to loading the boat. That's kind of a, a, a safety thing, which is extremely important. 
Um, but a lot of it is a learning, you know, every, every opportunity to learn where you don't reach out, you don't ask a question, you know, that's a missed opportunity. Um, there's always a way you should continually be looking to grow. Um, and so even, you know, I took my last junior call a week ago and I would still call the chief with questions, you know, how would they, they want to do things um, in part because everyone wants to do something a little differently and you'll learn that everyone, every institution, every resident, every staff has their own style. Um, but also there's always something to learn. There's always more to learn and grow. Um, it's not seven years because they need you to work at the hospital for seven years. It's seven years because it's an incredibly complex specialty with a lot to learn, a lot of nuance on how to do it well. Um, and so I think accepting that particularly early on when you're, you realize you're not alone, you know, there's people who want to support you and they want you to, to get better and they, they want to help you care for the patients as, as best as possible. Um, so I think understanding that early really helps get over the barrier of, you know, should I ask for help or not? Should I, you know, maybe just try to look this up on my own? You know, it's good to, to have some independent qualities, but when it comes to learning and residency, you know, reach out early and often. It's going to build rapport, you're going to make connections, and you're going to learn a lot more. And you're going to make fewer, fewer mistakes. Some of the best ways to learn are just hearing and learning about what other people have done wrong. You know, some of the best lessons I've learned in residency are accidents and problems that other residents have made that they've told me about and they've really stuck with me and I've gone on my way not to make them. You're still going to make mistakes and you're still going to have difficulties, but the sooner and better you reach out, you know, you're going to learn more, your experience is going to be more well-rounded um, and you're just going to have a better experience. So I think that that's kind of the first thing, appreciating particularly early on in your training that, you know, you're a, you're a trainee, you're, you're here to learn. Um, sometimes it feels like you're asked to do too much or make too many decisions on your own, but there's always people around. And as you get more confident in different situations, then you can build that autonomy and you can eventually start making a lot of decisions on your own. Um, but you can do so in a, a safe way where you're, you know, learning how to do it well, rather than kind of just blindly walking your way through it. Um, you know, I think everything, Ju Juliana is an incredibly mature intern. You know, she has a lot of insights that, that, took me much longer to learn. Um, and so I, th I think taking everything she said and applying it is going to be helpful. Um, there's a good question here about uh, tips and resources look at for building our neurosurgical triage in intuition. Yeah, it's a great question. Some of it is just going to be experience. Um, honestly, for, for me, what helped the most is just talking to other people, engaging residents, engaging staff, um, engage, you know, there's a lot of virtual things now where you can just hear stories. And for me, those stick a little better. Um, it's, it's very different. I think trauma and triage in general are much harder to have sort of an academic didactic lecture about and have you learn situational awareness. Um, you know, you can learn when someone comes in with a head trauma, you know, here are the steps and the things that you can do. You know, it's easy in isolation. It's much harder in reality. Um, because most patients, even the ones that are that fit in a relatively simple box, are always going to be unique, and you need to to be able to internalize a lot of uh, uh, divergent information and know how to weight different information. So just because someone tells you something doesn't mean that you know it's true or that it's it's mm. true all the way. Maybe it's partially true, and so learning how to to do that on your own. And for me, just hearing stories, you know having people give lectures with story-based or case-based learning. Um, uh, you know, I tried to spend as much time um, on this scenario when someone takes a call and that's kind of why we tried to build this in today. Cause I, I think it's such a valuable topic. You know, what do you do? How do you respond? You know, it's only a part of it is the actual knowledge. Some of it is, is what you do with that knowledge and how you apply it to, to patient care. And that, that's honestly a good chunk of what residents, uh, particularly intern years about. You know, you're all incredibly bright, you know, you've, you've completed med school and you realize that you have a lot of knowledge. But the one thing, at least for me, that I learned is I didn't really know how to apply that knowledge um, as effectively as I could. And a lot of that is just situational awareness. Um, and so I would just try to learn, you know, from M&Ms and case-based learning and finding any resources online. Um, I found things like textbooks to be a little less helpful. Um, more just lectures, talking to residents, hearing the stories. And a lot of it is, are just things that you're going to learn as you go through. You know, you're, you're not expected to know how to do all these things. So it, it's a good question. It's one of those frustrating things that just kind of takes time. 
I also wanted to address, um, you know, I think I, there have been many wonderful comments and I thank you all for um, some of the nice things you've said, but I, I really want to um, point out the fact that no matter how much training you do in advance and how much you study in advance, neurosurgery training is seven years for a reason and it's gonna take a while to learn how to do everything you need to do. And along the way, I would love to tell you you're not going to make any mistakes, but I make mistakes often. Um, but like Lucas said, reaching out early and talking to people to get their perspective and feedback is the best safety net to make sure that the mistakes you make don't reach a patient and don't cause patient harm. Um, and if for some reason someone at some point does make a mistake and a patient does get hurt or you make the wrong call, um, it's tough to bounce back from that. And I, I think in that perspective, the best thing would be to just do your best to learn from the experience and not letting it derail you along the way to making your career successful in neurosurgery. There's a, a question here from Jason about, um, you know, how we organize patient information to do's. Um, that, that's one thing you'll find, it doesn't matter where you go, it's a completely individual. Um, in general, uh, the, the more things you write down, the better it's going to go. That's kind of just a, you know, a fact, our, our sort of, um, our saying about it is if you don't write it down, it's already forgotten. Um, and, but everyone's got their own style and that's completely okay. Um, on call, I like to have a little notebook and so I can just jot things down as I go. Um, I did a lot more structured notes and, and things that I was doing as I was going as, you know, an intern in a two. And then as you get more experience and efficient, then you can start learning how to internalize information di differently. Um, but documenting it is key and figuring out your style. Um, some people like having sort of a structured note that they write down everything when they go see a patient. Um, some people like, you know, jotting buzzwords or keywords that they have. Um, and everyone's a little bit different. Um, I'll say that, uh, you know, our institution's a little different um, in that uh, for, we don't have like a night float. Everyone with the mentorship model has their patients. So you're assigned to a couple of staff and you're with those staff the whole two to three months. Um, you admit the patients, you go to, you take them to surgery, um, you care for them on the floor, you get pages overnight. And so there's no handoff. So, you know, just doing notes in the morning is just essentially whatever you want to convey to other people caring for the patient. If there's other consults or nursing or physical therapy or social work, anything like that. Um, so that's completely up to you. You know, you, there's no really relaying it. Um, and then on call, what we usually do is, um, there's a trauma email that goes out every morning to the on-call staff. And so it's a way to kind of detail your thoughts in a brief um, kind of succinct fashion. Um, but usually with the chief, you know, it's kind of whatever they're comfortable communicating with. I've had chiefs that, uh, chiefs that hate reading emails, so it's all just by phone. I have chiefs that want to sleep and just have you send them an, an email and then they'll kind of get to it in the morning. And so it, it, it's pretty different. I think in general, cr creating a system that's going to work for you and making it a little over the top when you start is going to be better. It's always better to have more information written down that then you can trim away as you realize, you know, maybe I didn't need to write that down rather than forgetting things all the time. Documentation is quite important, particularly in medicine these days. Um, and making your notes thorough and reliable will go a long way, particularly early on. And so if you need to write everything down, that's absolutely okay. Um, you know, surgeons in general kind of get a bad rap for having poor notes or thin notes and you'll see some some of that everywhere um, but particularly on call when there's multiple services or complex histories going on more documentation is always going to be favored provided it's accurate it's also going to protect you a little bit it's going to protect your team everything else going on if you can detail times and calls and um you know everything that went on discussions had uh that's going to one provide better care for the patient because a lot of times notes for trauma patients are pretty chaotic. You know, everyone's got their own little niche and it's harder for incoming services or people 
uh, to get a, a real message of what this patient is all about. And so if you can help contribute to that, it's ideal. It's also a little protective thing. Um, I don't know if Juliana, you have other s systems you like or things you like to do. I think uh, one of the best pieces of advice that was given to me is figure out who in your residency program you really trust. You're you, on a certain trauma night, you definitely are going to have a chief. And of course, you need to respect the chief's decisions. Um, but sometimes afterwards, you kind of wonder what someone else might have done. And it's not going behind someone's back, but it's just figuring out how to prepare yourself for when you take chief. How would you respond to that situation? How would you handle that trauma? Would you have gone to the OR? Would you have not gone to the OR? Um, so I have had the opportunity to be able to discuss certain cases um, with some of the other residents in our program to get their take on interesting things that I've seen so that I can be better prepared to handle whatever the senior's expectations of me would be during that specific situation. And so Lucas is definitely one of the residents that um, I really respect his opinion a lot and I frequently ask him for advice and um, mentorship to make sure that I'm on the right path in the program. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.